All right, my guys, welcome back to the channel, everyone. And honestly, I don't even know where to start, right? I never in my life expected the last video to get so much attention. So let me give you some context. At the time, I only had around 40 subscribers, I think one week ago. And those had been there for years. I don't even know where they come from. So for that video to get so much reach and for so many people to be curious about how things work, it completely blew my mind. A massive thank you to everyone who left feedback and to all the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. Yesterday I uploaded another video, which was actually the one I had in the pipeline already because, again, I didn't expect to get this much interaction. So to be honest, I'm a bit unsure where to begin, but let's start with how I came across the topic and how everything unfolded. About two weeks ago, a YouTube channel called Tactical Brit was recommended to me, and maybe you have heard of him by now, because he creates fascinating videos with lots of in-depth analysis. A couple days ago, he uploaded a video why the servers for Black Ops 6 are so terrible and why Warzone in general just sucks, right? I'll link his video in the description so you can check it out. It is really insightful like i would suggest you watch every single one of his videos regarding warzone and black ops 6 because it's really worth a watch now regarding my previous tutorial video i want to clarify something because in that video i hinted at a method using the resource monitor and mentioned between the lines that there are tools like wireshark out there which can monitor all your network traffic I also did some digging on Reddit and came across a post from someone who had similar issues dating back to MW3's Warzone era. He investigated his network traffic, identified problematic IP addresses and just blocked them. There are various ways to block connections. You can do it through your firewall or even configure it directly on your router. There are also software tools for geofencing and VPNs, but I strongly, strongly advise doing this manually to avoid unnecessary risks. And why did I explore this topic in the first place? Like I said, it all circles back to Tactical Brit. He pointed out major problems with the servers in his videos. The servers are just bad, like really bad. Back in the day there was a saying, ping is king. It meant that the player with the better connection had the advantage, which in my opinion makes perfect sense, right? But at some point someone decided that was unfair and they implemented systems like lag compensation. This essentially penalizes players with good connections to level the playing field for those with bad ones. And today we see the repercussions of these systems across modern gaming, matchmaking and lag compensation aim to make the experiences alike, but they often lead to inconsistent gameplay. And a major contributor is server tick rate. For context, games like CSGO or Valorant use 64 or even 120 hertz tick rate servers, meaning the game updates 64 or 120 times per second. This ensures smoother, more accurate gameplay, and by contrast, Warzone servers typically run at just 20 hertz, which is a downgrade. This lower tick rate means fewer updates per second, introducing noticeable delays in actions like shooting or movement. The root cause is often overloaded and outdated server infrastructure, and during peak times like evenings or game launches, the servers are overwhelmed, leading to drop packets and lag spikes. If you compare this to games like Apex Legends, which also uses 20Hz servers but compensates with better optimization, or Overwatch, which runs at 60Hz for a much more stable experience, these examples show how investing in server technology and optimization can significantly enhance gameplay consistency. In Warzone, however, the lack of investment in quality servers continues to hurt players, creating a game where poor server performance can determine the outcome of your match more than skill or strategy. Now let us talk about the tools. I want to emphasize that you need to be careful when using tools like NetLimiter or Wireshark. While they're incredibly powerful for analyzing your network traffic and identifying unnecessary connections, misusing them could violate terms of service or cause other problems. Using tools like these, you can monitor which IP addresses your game connects to and block unnecessary ones. For example, if you notice connections to servers outside your region, you can block them using your firewall. This method is often referred to as geofencing, 
Essentially, you restrict your game to connect only to servers in your region, which can significantly improve your connection stability. The Resource Monitor in Windows is a built-in tool designed for monitoring system performance. In the context of network activities, it allows users to identify active connections, view which IP addresses a program is communicating with, and check the associated network activity in real time. The theory behind using Resource Monitor for blocking IP addresses is based on the concept of geofencing. However, Resource Monitor alone doesn't allow you to block IPs. It's primarily a diagnostic tool. You would need to use a firewall or another tool like NetLimiter to enforce such restrictions. So what is Wireshark? Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer, making it ideal for capturing and inspecting network packets in detail. It allows you to capture live traffic, so you can view data packets exchanged between your system and the internet. You can analyze protocols, see which protocols are in use, for example TCP, UDP and HTTP, and also to inspect payloads to understand the actual content being transmitted, useful for debugging and analyzing suspicious traffic. Wireshark excels at providing granular insights into your network traffic. It's particularly useful for understanding the behavior of applications, detecting anomalies and diagnosing connectivity issues. However, it does not offer a straightforward way to block traffic, it's purely an analysis tool. NetLimiter, on the other hand, is a traffic management tool. Its primary purpose is to monitor bandwidth usage, so you can track how much data each application is consuming. You can limit speeds, so you can set up upload and download speed caps for specific programs, or you can block connections. You can easily block applications or IP addresses directly from the interface. What sets NetLimiter apart from Wireshark is its focus on control rather than analysis. While Wireshark helps you understand traffic patterns in detail, NetLimiter allows you to act on them by enforcing restrictions like speed limits or outright blocking specific connections. And a typical workflow could look like this. So first you use Wireshark to capture packets to analyze traffic patterns and identifying suspicious IP addresses or you could just use it to understand how a program communicates. Then you could use the net limiter from the insights you've gained from Wireshark. You can enforce rules, block unwanted IPs or just limit the bandwidth for specific programs. And this combination actually gives you a full toolkit to monitor, analyze and control network activity effectively. And as you've guessed, I won't give a tutorial on using the full toolkit here because I could get in trouble. And this is something you can deep dive in for yourself. It is really interesting. Um, like I said, I had a lot of fun in the last days, but now let's just talk about the normal resource monitor and what you can do with this. Because if you understand the idea behind it, I'm sure you can do other stuff with the toolkit provided, right? I think you know what I mean. To open the resource monitor, you can press Control, Shift and Escape to open the task manager and navigate to the performance tab and click on open resource monitor at the bottom or you just search it on Windows. The next step would be just switching to the network tab and you'll see a list of active programs and the processes with network activity section. And there you look for the Call of Duty executable and check the box next to it to filter connections related to the game. And the next step we have to understand the network data. So in the middle section under network activity you'll see details such as send, receive rates and process IDs. And you want to focus on the TCP connections section at the bottom. And there it says local address, which is your computer's IP address and port. And this will probably be blurred in the video. And I would suggest you not showing this IP address to anyone ever, right? You also have remote address. And this is the IP address of the server you're connected to. And also the latency, which is the delay in milliseconds between you and the server. Next step would be identifying the high latency servers. So it is really important that you join a game lobby and start the match. And what you don't want to do is look for IP addresses while you're in the lobby. So just wait until you join the game. It doesn't matter if the game has already started. You just need to play on a map. So once the match begins, you can monitor the TCP connections and pay close attention to the remote addresses and their corresponding latency values. 
you'll find all kinds of latencies. There will probably be a latency that is very low, close to your client's latency, but also high latency. For example, over 100 milliseconds, up to 200 milliseconds. And this often indicates a server that's far from your location that is communicating with your client. And it is really important that you focus on remote addresses with two numerical segments at the start. And now it's just all about recording the data. So you will spend several hours across multiple matches aiming to connect to as many different servers as possible. And if you care about your win and loss ratio, I would suggest doing this on a different account because yeah, you will just spend maybe one day, a couple hours just joining lobbies and uh, gathering IP addresses. So each map you either take a screenshot of the TCP connections or write down the remote IP addresses and their latency, for example, in a notepad file. And after you've identified IP addresses with high latency, we're about to block them. Let's take this IP address as an example. 13.107.3.254 And all we gotta do is modify the last segment of the IP address. So after the last dot, we have to replace the two five four and we replace it with zero slash twenty four so it looks like this one three dot one oh seven dot three dot zero slash twenty four and this blocks the entire range of IP addresses associated with that server. Now all we gotta do is open the Windows firewall with advanced security. We have to go to the rules and you will change in outbound rule so you create a new rule to block the identified IP range that we just have created so you choose custom rule the scope and there you will add the IP range that we just created so imagine you have like 10 IP addresses uh, after a couple hours and what you're going to do is you just take the last digits as I explained uh, remove them and just write zero slash 24 and you add them to your scope and what you do is just rinse and repeat every single time you find a new IP address. After blocking an IP range you can check the resource monitor during the next match and if the connection disappears or grays out the IP block was successfully blocked. And as I mentioned before, this method works on the principle of geofencing, where you filter connections to only allow access to specific servers, ideally those closer to your physical location. By blocking high latency IP ranges, you increase the likelihood of being matched with servers that provide a smoother gameplay experience. While this guide covers the basics using the resource monitor, advanced users can utilize tools like the NetLimiter or Wireshark to analyze and refine their approach further. And I've connected to so many different servers all around the world in the last couple of days and I really enjoyed it. Before I forget here also a few warnings because you have to be very careful when blocking certain IPs because some are essential for features like voice or text chat and if you block too many addresses you might struggle to find a match or even launch the game. So if you blocked one IP address range and something broke you can just go back and delete that rule in the firewall and everything should be back to normal. The goal of this method is to connect only to servers that offer the best experience for you. And in my case, that's always the Frankfurt servers. This method isn't about exploiting the game, but optimizing your connection for a better overall experience. So that's all for now. If you have any suggestions or tips, drop them in the comments. Thanks again for all the feedback on the video. Uh, this was like a one-time take right here. I didn't even made a script. I didn't really prepare for it because I didn't know I would get so much feedback. Really, I'm still overwhelmed a little bit, um, but I have to edit now uh, to teach you guys how to do some stuff. And I'm sorry if I didn't go into detail on how to tamper with connections but like I said this is your own risk and I am pretty sure that I am already shadow banned like I said they have some enforcements on my account and the lobbies that I find if I find one are unplayable and I already uninstalled black ops 6 because 
you got a Modern Warfare 3 gameplay yesterday, and that game is awesome. Like, I'm pretty sure I can make some more content with this one. But, like I said, that's it for today, guys. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you have any problems, um, you can also use ChatGPT. It is really helpful with this stuff. You just have to be very precise. And yeah, I hope that you can geofence yourself into a better location and make sure that you always have the best latency possible. And I wish you good luck. Take care, guys. See you in the next one.